All right, uh, here's the second part of objective one where we're talking about specifically modeling inverse variation, inverse variation. So we'll start off by taking, taking a look at this exercise. A company has found that the demand for its product varies inversely as the price of the product. What does that mean? That means as the price goes up, nobody wants to buy it. As the price goes down, more people want to buy it. Okay, write an equation that relates the demand D and the price P and interpret what that means. So, um, again, this is what we're saying. Demand, if the price goes up, demand goes down. Price goes down, demand goes up. This is the way we write it. Demand is equal to constant divided by the price. This is what is called inverse variation. And what it means again is as, dem as price goes up, so price increases, then demand decreases. As one of the quantities goes up, the other one has to go down. Demand goes down. Okay, this is the exact opposite of direct. In direct variation, if one of the quantities goes up, the other one also goes up. This one's the opposite. One goes up, the other one goes down. Okay. That's what inverse variation means. So each one of these are equivalent to each other. So the first one is, yeah, there we go, y varies inversely with or as x, or you might say it as y varies, uh, is inversely proportional to x. And what this means is you're going to write an equation like this. y is equal to a over x, where a is the constant of variation, still called a constant of variation. And that x that's down on the bottom, it doesn't have to be just to the first power. It could be to whatever power we want it to be. When we open this up, we were talking about gravity, and that was inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. And so down on the bottom, it would have a little x squared instead. Right? Right. So let's try one of these examples. The variable y is inversely proportional to x which means that I'm going to write an equation like this. y equals a divided by x. And then it's going to give me some numbers. y is equal to 12 when x is equal to a half. Let's write it down. y is equal to 12 equals a over 1 half. How do I get rid of that 1 half that's on the bottom? I'm going to times both sides by a half. Times by a half. It gets rid of this half. And what's half of 12? So there's our constant of variation. And rewriting our equation, y is equal to 6 over x. OK, and uh, don't let that throw you. You're not used to having x down there on the bottom of a fraction, but that's OK. That's basically what this whole unit is about, having x's down in the bottom instead of up in the top where you think they're supposed to go. And then finally, what is y when x is equal to 12? Watch what's going to happen to this. So y is equal to 6 over 12, put that in, which reduces to a half. Look at that. Back at the very beginning, y was 12, x is a half. And then if x is 12, y is a half. They both switch out. Crazy. OK. Now, we looked at this before with direct variation. In direct variation, if I divided the y by the x, I got the constant variation. So if I take this equation, y is equal to a times x, then I can get the constant of variation by just getting this x over to the other side, just multiplying it over, and a is equal to x times y. This means if I have an equation that shows me inverse variation, to check it, all I have to do is look at the numbers and times them together and see if they multiply up to the same number. So if I multiply, look at the equation there, y is equal to 2 over x. If I multiply that x over, the constant of variation is 2. And if that means if I multiply both of my variables together, I should always get an answer of 2. So look at this table. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 thirds times 2, the 3's will cancel. I get 2. 1 half times 4. Also, look at this. As 
X is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What's happening to Y's? They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Remember, that's what happens with inverse variation. As one variable goes up, the other one goes down. Okay, so this table shows or compares the area of uh, a computer chip and the number of chips that can be cut from a big silicone wafer. So you can see that a guy in the little clean suit there and he's holding the thing, looks like it's got rainbow colors and it's real pretty. Anyway, so here is the area of a chip and the number of chips they could cut from that wafer. And the first part of this is to write a model um, that gives C as a function of A. So let's just look at the numbers. Look at X's. The X's are increasing and now look at the Y's, same thing as C. Okay. Those things are decreasing. So one's going up, one's going down. This is an indication it might be inverse variation. To check it, we need to multiply those two things together to see if I get the number that's the same, the constant of variation. Let's pull up this calculator again, and let's just divide them. Clear all this out. So, uh, not divide, multiply them. So how about 58 times 448, I get 25,984. Okay, that's 162 times 424, 26,000. 288, that one's about 26,000 also. Okay, next one, how about 66 times 392, 25,872, also around 26,000. Last one, 70 times 376. Also around 26,000. So we're going to say, again, for this real world problem, um, I don't get exactly the same constant variation, but it's approximately 26,000. So that's what I'm going to write in my little equation here. So let's go back here and write this as um, uh, this one, yes. C, C is like my Y value, is equal to 26,000 divided by A. This should approximate the number of chips that I can cut from that way for, for a given area of each one of those chips. Okay. The second one of this is what is the number of chips per wafer when the area is 81? So let me just go back to that 81 millimeter squared. Let's put in 81 here. So 26,000 divided by 81. Pull up the calculator again. 26,000 divided by 81. Wait, 26,000 divided by 81. There we go. And I'm going to say I can cut about 321 uh, from that. So let's go over here and say I can cut about 321 chips. Let me see. I think that's the, la that's the last one in this little bit. So that's inverse variation as one's well going up. The other one's going down. Y is equal to A divided by X. Okay, so the next one is about joint variation. That'll finish up objective one.